Hey, Joe Zach here, uh, talking to you today about one of my favorite tools uh, called Scaffold. And what Scaffold is, it's an open source tool from Google that helps you manage Kubernetes environments. And that description is pretty vague. It doesn't really convey uh, the, the immense value that I get out of this tool. And so I wanted to make a quick video that really just uh, showed you why I'm so excited about it. And so I'm gonna leave uh, a lot of stuff out of this video about Scaffold, and we're not going deep at all. I'm just gonna show you the main value proposition, the main things that I get out of Scaffold as quickly and as simply as I can. So there's the website, scaffold.dev. You can get it, uh, you know, you can kind of brew install it. Uh, there's a, a variety of ways to get it based on your platform. Uh, and so uh, I'll have a link down in the description. And here's my favorite reference point. So this is long. It's got all the different things that you can kind of specify in the scaffold.yaml file, which is the main file that kind of describes the environment that we're gonna be setting up. And uh, you could really go crazy here. And uh, there's a lot of different options and avenues and uh, alleyways to go into that. I'm just gonna skip right over. So uh, let's just get to it. And you see uh, right here, API version and kind of config, these are required. This is just kind of setting up the, uh, the basic boilerplate here. So I'm just gonna grab this. You can see there's different versions here on the right. So I'm just going to use uh, latest, and I think that should be good. So V2 beta 19. So if I open up a terminal here, I don't have anything to do. Uh, <laughs> I don't actually know what's going to happen here since I don't have anything to build. But uh, okay, cool. So no error, uh, nothing really happened. Now, uh, this video is not about Docker, it's not about Kubernetes, and so I went ahead and already set that stuff up, but I'll show you uh, what we're gonna be using. And I created a dead simple HTML file, the hello world in it. And I've got a really dead simple uh, Ubuntu image that basically is going to copy that index uh, HTML file into my container, and it's gonna expose port 80 and then it's gonna run a, a very simple web server uh, using that file, and that's it. So what we're gonna do here is come back to our scaffold.yaml file, which by default is the file that scaffold's gonna look for when you tell it to do something. We're gonna add a section uh, called build, and this is, uh, this is all in that um, reference sheet that uh, I showed you earlier. And uh, build is made up of artifacts, and uh, I think we got to give it a name. We'll call it dub dub dub. And by default, it's going to use Docker or other options. And we're going to tell it that the context is dub dub dub, which is telling Docker to go into this folder uh, before it does its build. And by convention, it's going to see that Docker file. Uh, so that should just work. So now when I do a scaffold build. What Scaffold's gonna do is it's gonna go through this file and look for artifacts that need to be built. It's gonna compare with uh, what's already been built and you know bring in all that goodness that it gets from just Docker and caching in general. And should see that it needs to build some stuff here. And apparently I goofed something up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check that documentation. So build artifacts, ah, it's not name, it's uh, dash image and this is required so let's get that fixed up sorry about that try that one more time all right so uh dead simple uh it's going out there and it's doing exactly what i said it's going to do it's basically doing a docker build this is the same thing that you would get from cd'ing to this directory and doing a docker build dot for the directory and then dash t and uh latest for the image uh, or dub 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 colon latest so while that's going on i'll show you real quickly just the other kinds of options that are in here so uh there's a lot of other stuff i don't even know what it all is um you can see there's a section here for docker if you need to make uh, configurations um, changes like build arguments or anything like that uh, and there's there's ways for swapping all sorts of stuff that i said i wasn't going to talk about but uh, Basil, Jib, uh, Kaneko, uh, other stuff too. So this file is definitely part of everything. It was still going. I actually uh, I cleared all my Docker images before making this video. And I guess I underestimated how long it would take to download Ubuntu. So 
Let's give it an extra minute. All right, and uh, now we're done. We built dub 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 latest. All right. So uh, at this point, we've told Scaffold how to build containers, but we haven't told it anything about Kubernetes. So uh, let's set up a new section here called Deploy, also very well documented. And let's see if I can remember this. Uh, the tool we're gonna use to deploy is kubectl, which comes uh, installed by default uh, with Kubernetes. Just a, a simple admin tool. And I believe this is called manifests. And it's an array. And what you do here is you give it a list of Kubernetes files and it will go and uh, basically apply those files. So here I've got uh, two files because remember this is, video is not about Kubernetes. And so I'm gonna kind of go over this just really quickly. Both of these I created just by doing kubectl create and just typing in a few arguments. And all it is is a simple service that takes port 80 and it links to an app named www. Go over here to our deployment file. And deployment says we've got a single replica uh, matching www. And it's got a container named www, which if you remember, that's what we uh, created earlier in the build. So let's go back over here and we'll say deploy slash I'm going to be lazy here and just say star.yaml. So now if we do scaffold deploy, what scaffold's going to do, if I did this all correctly, is it's going to go through my Kubernetes files and it's going to try to apply them to my cluster. Oh, and I lied. It's not scaffold deploy. That's what scaffold does, but uh, there's a couple different things you can do. I'm going to do scaffold dev and uh, it's gonna do what I said it's gonna do. But additionally, uh, one nice thing about, uh, about dev is that it's going to attach to the process and it's gonna watch for changes. So now I'm gonna open up another tab here, open up one of my other favorite tools I made videos about. Uh, I think it's by default, I'm just canines. So it's just a, CLI interface, uh, so we can see the cluster. We can see that 22 seconds ago, uh, a pod named, uh, or a service named www was deployed. We can drill into that, see we've got a pod here named www. It's got a little hash at the end because it's just a single replica. We'll go and see we've got a deploy as well. So that's all well and good, but uh, I don't have a way to view this right now. So what I would do is uh, basically forward port going here. Uh, I didn't do a good job naming things. I left everything default. So uh, now I've forwarded uh, port 80. So if we come over here, we should see my uh, hello world app. Fingers crossed. All right. So remember, I said uh, scaffold dev is watching my files. So if we come over here, uh, we can make a change to our files. So let's just go over here. I'm gonna go back to this tab just so we can watch it. And I'm gonna say, hello, uh, YouTube. Save it. And when I'm, once I saved it, it's watching the files, the scaffold is gonna go and it's gonna rebuild my container. And then it's going to apply that change in Kubernetes. And then it's watching for changes. So now if I come back to my port 80, and refresh it, it doesn't work. Well, why doesn't it work? It's because I lost my port forward because we come up here and look at our pods. Uh, hopefully this is not too small to see, but uh, this pod has only been around, around for 22 seconds because it just got redeployed and pods are transient. So we can come in here, do a port forward again, man, this stinks. And then we come over here, we should see, hello YouTube. Uh, okay, so that's pretty cool. There's things we liked there, there's things we didn't. But uh, another option that Scaffold has, and remember this is the tip of the iceberg, so we can just say port forward. What I did is I, I just hit control C here, so it actually just canceled out of what I was running. And now I'm going to uh, first check, because I don't remember if it actually 
open these things up. So let's just double check to see the state of our Kubernetes environment. All right, we've got one pod running. Dub, dub, dub. It's been up for 67 seconds. So I'm going to run scaffold dev again and port forward. It's going to check to see if it needs to do a build. Does it? It's going to start to deploy. And this time it's going to go uh, look at my uh, files, my services, and look for any ports that could be forwarded. And uh, in this case, it went ahead and associated a random port 4503 to my port 80. It was defined in uh, the service. So shut that down, open up now port 54503, and hello YouTube. And still got the same benefits, but now I can make changes over say, I don't know, hello to you, YouTube. I'm feeling very creative. We'll give this a couple refreshes, and in a couple seconds, we should see this change. One thing you'll notice is that this is not super fast, right? Hey, there we go. So this is not something that you would want to do uh, if you're doing a lot of like front end work, for example. But what you can do is use this for services that you aren't changing so much. So like, let's say you've got an environment where you've got uh, a database and a search engine and a back end and a front end and you're making front end changes. Well, you can go ahead and run scaffold to start up all the services and then just work with whatever ones you need uh, in isolation and everything else will still be up there for you to work with. And my favorite thing about this, I think, is that if a new developer joins a team, then I can tell them, hey, uh, go to the root of the project. We already have a scaffold file set up that shows you all the relevant bits and kind of points you around to everything that's relevant for this project. And uh, you just run scaffold dev dash dash port forward. And that's gonna set up you uh, in an environment that's, um, you know, just ready to go. So it's a really great uh, onboarding experience. And there's a lot of other stuff you can do too. Like this translates really well. Like I showed you scaffold build earlier. Um, the dev actually does the build as part of it. So that's not really necessary, but it's really helpful for CI CD servers. Um, there's a debug uh, setup too. So certain languages you can actually do, you know, set up a, so like a debugger. So you can debug these things running inside the containers. Um, and there's just a bunch of other stuff that can do like scaffold help. Just to kind of give you a picture of like, what other things are available. And I know you, you might be thinking like, yeah, it sounds nice to practice, but it's uh, it kind of looks a little too simple for my specific environment. There's, you know, things that need to change per environment, um, per person maybe. And Scaffold has got you covered there too. They have notions uh, called modules and profiles that you can use to really I split things up um, so you can kind of optionally run any pieces of the architecture and also it has really great support for things like customize or helm that you can use for like templating variables and all sorts of stuff uh, one last thing i want to mention real quick is just a test oh, two things i lied uh, test is useful for running like integration tests so this might be a great way you can say like scaffold test and it could run through some scripts that you set up uh, and run in your environment to do some end-to-end -end tests which is really nice and last one is uh, scaffold delete, which you can always just uh, you know reset your Kubernetes environment. But sometimes it's nice to just be able to say scaffold delete, and uh, it's going to delete everything that it's created, which is just kind of nice for starting over if you goof something up real bad. So uh, that's pretty cool. So that is hopefully a really short and helpful video for you to kind of see what scaffolds like. And uh, let me know if you like this sort of content or you have more questions about Scaffold. And I'd love to show you more about like those, um, you know, modules and profiles or how debug works because uh, I love this stuff. And so, uh, yeah, just drop a comment or a like or whatever. And if you like this sort of thing, uh, check out the podcast. Right, see ya.